Hello and welcome back to Everything Tumblr Tutorials. My name is Rebecca Ascott and I am a Tumblr creator. And in this fun little video, I'm going to show you how we're going to mash up using a wine glass that's oversized so that we can glitter and decorate the base. Everything used in this tutorial will be down in the description for you guys below. So let's get started. So jumping right into this tutorial today, I'm working with a very large oversized wine glass that I'm pretty sure one of my kids gifted me as a joke. Um, and I thought, man, it's been sitting in the box and I really just want to dress her up and have fun with it. So we got a lot going on with this today. Also, if I call it a tumbler, it's out of pure habit. So please just let's overlook that. But we, we all know I'm working with a wine glass. So the first things first is I'm gonna go ahead and tape off this rim. I think this rim size is going to be a personal preference. It's awfully wide, but again, you don't want your lips hovering over the epoxy even after it's cured. So once I apply this painter's tape, I do go back in with a much thinner, almost like vinyl-like piece of tape. And that's just to make sure that it's nice and straight going around the wine glass. Here I'm just using 100% acetone to wipe down the bottom base and the stem. Now, you'll see she's stuffed with everything. I'm currently waiting on my new supplies to come in so that I can use for my inserts. So this is a tumbler insert with a football wrapped around with paper towels. Also, we can make sure that she's secure. So when I put her on the turner, I won't have any issues. So normally I like to use spray paint as my base to apply my glitter. However, I really want to see this angel dust, which is a diamond cut from AB Designs through the glass. So it wouldn't make sense if I spray painted it white. So we're going to go in and just Mod Podge the entire thing. And I'm pretty sure I did two coats. So when I did the first coat with Mod Podge, completely covered it, glittered it, allowed that to dry, and then I used clear seal from Rust-Oleum, sealed it, reapplied glitter, let that dry, and then I went back in, sealed it again before the first coat of epoxy. There was once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good Once I was pretty sure I had a nice smooth coat of Mod Podge, it was now time to glitter. And when I tell you guys, this glitter is absolutely amazing. Remember, it's from AB Designs Co. It's like a mirror finish. She's absolutely stunning. Once a day that I would pray for you I'd go and misbehave just so you'd notice too Sneaking looks up and down from across the room Damn, what a hell of a view I feel good, you look great I like you, I can't wait Our first time, our first day You're so fine, I'm so lame You sip wine, I drink straight Don't waste time to my place I feel my heart ain't Now that we've applied the glitter and we know that she's sealed and dry, we're ready to move on to the first coat of epoxy. And because this is such a shiny, shiny, vibrant white, it was imperative for me to use the artist resin from CCDIY. I do speed up this clip, but I also wanted to you guys to see the whole thing and how I go through the stem as well as the base. Once you're happy with your epoxy coat, make sure you use your heat torch to pop any bubbles you may or may not be able to see. Then we're going to wait about 20 to 25 minutes and pull the tape. Anytime that I need to remove tape from a tumbler or in this case a wine glass, I always like to pull away from myself. That I think maybe is a personal preference. You'll also notice after the tape is removed, I personally did not like how wide the gap was from the edge of my glitter to the top of the wine glass itself. 
So I come back in, which you'll soon see after it's cured, that I kind of dress up that rim just a little bit, but still leaving that space to where I can put my mouth on the tumbler without it being an issue. And I said tumbler. I certainly meant wine glass. <laughs> Once I have removed all of the tape, we're just going to allow this to fully cure for six to eight hours. The colder your climate, the longer it's going to take. I want to share a little tip with you guys because most of us tend to work in our garages. So for me, if it's cold or chillier and I come to my tumbler and or in this case, the wine glass and it's still chilly, typically my tumbler or in this case, my wine glass is going to be tacky. Therefore, I will take it inside the house where the temperature is a lot warmer and I'll wait a couple more hours and by then it's no longer tacky. When I get this little tiny piece removed, I'm going to take a Q-tip or whatever I have on hand and I'll use acetone and clean up that edge before this fully cures. Once the wine glass has fully cured, we're going to sand it just like a tumbler. You really want to make sure everything is nice and smooth, especially if you're going to apply a decal. I do not show me placing the decal as I have done it many a times, but it also wasn't the main event on this tumbler. But you will see the finished product and how everything came together. However, once I got the decal and my trim up around the clear portion of the wine glass decorated and taken care of, I in fact needed to apply another coat of the Artist Resin from Counterculture DIY before moving on to the base. Okay, so here's the main event. I've got the watermelon slices and I've got some fake ice. The fake ice is from AB Designs and the watermelon slices I just picked up from Amazon. The mold you can actually pick up from Amazon and or Michaels. I've decided to go in and add the same glitter that I used on the tumbler for the base that's going to be the structure where our stem is going to sit. So I added in and again, I am using the Artist Resin from Counterculture DIY. So this time frame is again six to eight hours. So I didn't have to have any additional time because once I got this mold taken care of and my glass stem was in the base of this mold, I took that little beautiful glittery tray and took it inside and that's where it sat all night to cure. So I put my first initial layer in and then I'm going to put the glass inside the geo mold and then I'm going to add more epoxy than the ice just to kind of give it that solid structured base with the ice included. Now that I've secured the base into my mold, here's where I'm going to go ahead and add more of my epoxy. The one thing I did not take into consideration was adding the ice. So I had a little bit of overfill. So please learn from my mistake. As everyone knows, if you've ever seen my videos before, I'm not afraid to show my mistakes because I also show you how you can fix them or I at least tell you how you can fix them. And in this particular case, ease up on the epoxy because you want to make sure you have enough room for your fake ice so that you don't get an overflow. Now, my overflow wasn't horrible, but it could have been. It could have been bad. So here's where I'm going to start adding the ice and then I start adding more and more and more and more. At any rate, You'll see, I had a little bit of overspill, but it was right along the rim of the mold, if that makes sense. <laughs> so of course, once I started to get an overfill, I saw things weren't going very well. I just stopped adding the ice, cleaned up that edge as best as I could, and decided to take her inside and just let her cure. As I got busy with other things, this ended up curing for almost 24 hours, which was not a big deal. Sometimes the more it sits, the better. However, remember that overspill, overflow I was talking about? <laughs> Whoops, I guess it could go horribly wrong because it ended up tearing my mold. My mold I just got from Michaels because 
right up underneath that lip it ended up pinching it and there was no way I was getting this off and it actually pinched in that spot and one other spot here on the other side so it eventually tore it didn't take very long so unfortunately that was my error not product error hey but it is what it is and thankfully this particular set came with two of these geo molds so it actually turned right around and made another one just to make sure it wasn't the product and that it was me by accident so here you'll you're gonna see that i'm like yanking and pulling and using my exacto knife to do some surgery here to get this mold released. Here is where I'm going to give you the close up of that very, very thin, just that thin little bits that was an overflow of the mold. So it ended up working out to where I could use my X Acto knife because thankfully it was so thin, I could use the X Acto knife to basically just cut it off. I cut that all off off camera so I didn't stab myself and start bleeding to death on camera. But now it's all situated and we're back in business and we can proceed with the point, <laughs> the whole video. For the rest of the base, I'm going to be using the Mad Glitter UV and my UV light that I purchased from Amazon just to go ahead and drizzle all the UV resin right here onto the base to where I can continue to add in the ice and my watermelon slice. So I'm going to do little by little, kind of flooding this in at this point because I really want this stuff to stick. I don't want any ice falling off later and trying to explain that. So I'm just going to build up now and just make the base super cute. And of course, when working with UV resin, you obviously want to build a little bit here, cure it, build a little bit there, and then cure it again. Each time I start building up, I will go about 30 to 40 seconds and then stop, go back in, continue to fill up the way that I want it, and then just continue to go back in and cure. Once I feel like I've decorated the base the way that I wanted it, I'll go in for a good five minutes, curing 120 seconds at a time, just to really make sure that I've cured the entire base. By now you've probably noticed the decal as well as me using the one millimeter nail tape from AB Designs to go up and around kind of like a squiggly design at the top of the rim. But again, leaving the space and a decent gap from the edge of the epoxy to the rim of the wine glass. Once you have built up the bottom of the base of the wine glass it is completed. This does not need another coat of epoxy. Here you can see a nice thin transition from the wine glass to the thin epoxy coat here at the rim. It's also a personal preference to go ahead and add some UV resin to the watermelon to give it more of a fresh appearance. It's also a personal preference to go ahead and paint down the base, which is what I wanted to do to give a little more color down here at the bottom. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tutorials coming soon. Also, drop me a comment below if you have any questions. Thanks again, and I'll see you soon.